actually what we can do. This year it's just on a whole nother scale. Uh, we've had the chance to bring people from all around the world. There's some kids from Kenya here. There's some people from India here. We had to deal with visa issues. And the students that are here are, you know, they're downstairs hacking and they're already building incredible stuff. And so I'm just really looking forward to, to being a part of it, to be honest. This expo is my first expo I have ever been to. I mean, the actual hackathon. So yes, uh, I'm, I'm aiming at exploring the new fields of blockchain and learning and meeting a lot of new people. We are um, a part of Kerala Blockchain Academy. So we are working on some projects uh, in the healthcare in industry. And here we are with the project idea of uh, rainwater harvesting. There's people coming in from all different sectors and all different uh, industries, right? Like there's blockchain tech being built for healthcare data. Uh, there's blockchain tech being built for shipping logistics. Um, I think I knew. I think I know of a company in Utah that's building something for food sourcing. So if you know what farms it comes from and things like that, yeah, we're building um, a, like decentralized marketplace for non-fungible tokens, so you can trade your crypto kitty for someone's house. So I would really like to see a project that I proposed to people, which is to be able to create a succinct uh, zero knowledge proof to check whether a compiled program binary came from its original source code. Uh, super useful for security and distributed systems, being able to immediately check in constant runtime if, uh, if the program that you're about to download and run on your computer safely came from the code that you're reading. What I need is a test set of binaries. I, don't, I just don't want to just... I'm pulling it up now. Yeah. Pull it up. Okay, is there a way you can make this script sort of run, like a run for all? Like if you got I, it. What, why not? Do you have a ticket or ID? And did you guys want to This is our fifth annual expo, so we've actually been doing the expo for five years now. And the expo itself is larger than it's ever been before. We have two lecture halls this year. So we're filling up 800 people. Uh, that's how many people we're bringing for the expo, a mix of entrepreneurs, innovators, developers, traders, financiers, um, yeah, all people from all walks of life. As a mighty Bitcoin club, we have decided to refund all tickets. So all of you are getting your money back. Yeah, it's tell that to your friends who didn't want to pay $150 to be here today. And those people who went to the other conference in Harvard Square paying $600. Is that amazing award? All the content, all the networking, all the food, all the knowledge for free. per ticket. Thanks, now I can talk. I think you need to charge $2,000 per ticket because you need that to run your conference. We did it all without charging anyone anything for tickets. Woo! Bitcoin doesn't discriminate. Blockchain, just as the internet, is, for, is not for the elite. It's for everyone. I guess I'm here, just one of my friends, he's doing a pitch for one of the, for the Bitcoin Expo, so he told me about the event, so, so we've been uh, attending some Bitcoin hackathons, I've been just doing some online courses and stuff, so I just thought, come, see what's here, and take a look at it. This is a mechanism that can move $8 billion within months, okay? So this is just the speed of how this is all moving. The space is rapidly changing and the only way to actually know what's going on is to be on the ground and we wanted to offer this opportunity to all of the students and everyone around us to actually get to hear uh, what's really happening. Here I am man, I'm here to just meet some other Bitcoiners, some other passionate people, you know, um, the, understand the philosophical implications of Bitcoin, you know. Last year the, the attendance didn't even compare and I'm sure next year um, we're going to have to get more rooms because uh, more and more people get interested in this every year. If you want to require multiple signers, if you want to require time locks, if you want a, a backup scenario in case you have two parties and one of them drops off, then you have to use the more advanced features of script and that's what Lightning does. Is that money to it? Or anyone can take your public key and a script and combine those and use that route. 
Uh, in the case of graph-through, however, there needs to be signatures involved. And so someone's private key has to be online. So it doesn't work quite as well with like cold storage offline walls. It's nice to, to be exposed to this and see what developers are wanting to use our software for. Three, ran by a second place and third place uh, to receive the awards of $5,000, $4,000, and $3,000 respectively. to hear people's sort of response and thoughts to our work. Yeah. I think that you know there's certainly I mean obviously what we could pull together in a day's in a day's time um, doesn't represent the full potential of this of you know of obfuscation on Ethereum. But I think you know if this is something people are really excited about, if this is something that has applications that people want to see fleshed out further and made formal, we'd love to hear that and yeah. you know, to see to see where see where people want to take this. Also, mm -hmm. uh, thank you to the organizers and everyone who put yeah, this together. This is an expo. amazing experience. A lot of smart people here. Yeah. So you know we're lucky to be here. <laughs> is financial regulation. Everyone is looking at what the SEC is saying, what the CFTC is saying. Um, we're all sort of wondering what's going to happen with ICOs. Now we seem to be at the heart of the capital markets. When is an ICO a security? When does an exchange need to be regulated? I'm, I'm okay with reasonable regulation. Um, I think that, um, I think though that there needs to be a lot of education and the SEC has, has been fairly understanding. At the end of the day, you have all, you brought them all together and you see people talking to each other, you see people chatting, you see people working on things, you see sponsors talking to speakers, speakers talking to students, students talking to sponsors, and you see all these connections being made and that makes all the chaos worth it. And you're like, okay, you know, maybe somewhere, somewhere in this crowd, at least one person's life was changed and that's it. That's all that needs to happen from, if that's all that happened from this expo, then it was worth the months of planning that went into it. I think we're going to see a lot of shifts towards this decentralized uh, world now as more blockchain tech becomes more apparent. And recently I was in San Francisco at a meetup there and somebody had said that people should not be building products right now on the blockchain. They need to be building infrastructure. There's really no reason why your house or your car or your land or your personal property can't be tokenized and to do that with billions of people all around the world uh, directly. So that's like, we're right on the cusp of those kinds of things being possible. Obviously there's some things in the way. Some of the big ones uh, include uh, much more mature and scalable public blockchains. So it's really exciting to think about these possibilities, but if we tried to do any of them today, it would be extremely difficult. So we need to have radically higher levels of, of scalability. If you want it to succeed, this space is so early and so young that you can get to the front of the lines and make it succeed. So if you have an effect on one person sitting next to you, or your mother at home who didn't know what the blockchain was last week, and then you took the time to explain it to her, okay, that is changing the world. My only thing to say is that this is just the beginning of what we're about to go through. So we're in for a ride. Now we're going to become founder of Angel that says, a good conference is a vacation that we take with really smart friends. This has been really fantastic for me. I hope it's the same for all of you. I'm really excited about the, uh, the future of the decentralized web, and I'm excited to see what the socio-political implications <laughs> of adopting uncensorable, unstoppable, end-to-end -end encrypted applications are. <laughs>